Okay, so this is a big boy right here. So this is the first fat tire electric bike coming from Ride One Up, and this is their Rift electric bike. And the reason why this frame is so big and robust is because this bike is made for on-roading and also off-roading. So you have this very nice and solid aluminum frame right here built very nicely. And the total weight that this bike can support is up to 350 pounds. And then the rear rack that comes with this bike is also integrated into the overall frame of the bike. So it's nice and strong aluminum as well. And this can support up to 150 pounds of that total weight limit that this bike does support. And I really like the fact that they threw in these uh, bungee cables here automatically here. So it's basically one piece that strings out into three separate pieces. So it makes it really nice to strap down a jacket or a bag if you wanted to. So I like the fact that they did that automatically and you don't have to go to Amazon and find one that will fit as nice as this one does. And then also Ride One Up does have this Connect Plus system that works with a few accessories that you can get on their website. So they have like a basket and also an additional passenger seat that you can throw on this thing. So that whole system is very quick and easy to connect and disconnect those things. And so I don't have any of those to show you right now, but it is pretty convenient to have that passenger set up. So if you do want to put a kid or an adult that weighs under 150 pounds on this thing, you can do it pretty easily. And also on the back of this rear rack, you will notice a brake light which is nice to have at this $18.95 price point with this bike so that is good then also up front you'll find a basic headlight but if you are going to be doing a lot of nighttime riding I might want to upgrade that to something that has wider coverage uh, but then up on the handlebars really good nice comfortable rubber grips here they do have a palm rest so very nice to hold on to these and on the right hand side you will find the controls for the eight-speed Shimano shifter here so uh, really good to have that and then on the left hand side you will find the thumb Thumb throttle which normally I like to have my thumb throttles or any type of throttle controls on the right hand side of the handlebars but it's not a deal breaker for me but personally I like it on the right side but yes yeah, on the left hand side and then next to that you will find the color display which is good in direct sunlight um, really nice and easy to read when you're riding um, you have some buttons there to be able to go up the uh, five levels of pedal assist and you'll also be using the same display to be able to unlock this electric bike because it does ship to you as a class 2 electric bike meaning that you can get up to 20 miles per hour but when you do unlock it to go into class three, that means you can get up to 28 miles per hour. Now this is a fat tire bike and you get some big fat tires on this bike. So you have two 26 by four inch fat tires that will allow you to be able to kind of float over, you know, different types of terrain because of the size. Uh, but also the front suspension does a pretty decent job as well. But yeah, these tires are gonna be kind of made for, you know, all different types of surfaces, but you can always swap them out for the particular surface that you might be riding on the most if you want anything more rugged or something that's more flatter and more smoother for more street riding and stuff. Now, as you can see from my tires here, I got a little muddy today. So these stock tires did pretty well in these conditions, going up a slight little hill in muddy, you know, mud, <laughs> muddy mud, that doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, they held up pretty well. But if I was going to be doing a lot more off-roading, I might go ahead and upgrade these to a little bit more knobby tires that might give me just a little bit more grip. Um, but for stock tires, they held up pretty well. But I do wish this bike had a little bit of memory as far as your previous ride settings. So you see I'm on pedal assist level five. I just turned it off. And then now when I go back to turn it back on, I would hope that it will leave me at pedal assist five, but it will take me back to pedal assist zero. So I have to bump that back up. So it's a small little kind of minor thing, but that is a preference of mine to be able to have it remember my last ride settings. All right, so now for my speed test, I know it's a little dark right now, but we're about to go into the light. Uh, but anyway, this bike does ship to you as a class two. You need to contact Ride One Up to be able to get the unlock code to be able to make this a class three electric bike. But our first test will be just using pedal assist. So let's get this thing going in three, two, one, boom. All righty, here we go. Pedaling should be able to, to uh, get up to at least 28 miles per hour. And here we go, baby. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And we had a little bit of uphill and a little bit of downhill now, more flat. So yeah, we got up to uh, 29. I would say definitely 28 with a little bit of work though. And all right, now for the throttle only test. So three, two, one, boom. And so just for reference, I do weigh around 220 pounds. So again, your speed might be a little bit different depending on how much you weigh. But we're at 20 miles per hour right now. And looks like we got up to 21 there for a little bit. But looks like, like on throttle only, even if you do have this bike unlocked, you're gonna be hovering around 20 miles per hour. So good cruising speed, 
Not the fastest that Ride One Up offers compared to like their Rev One, but here you go. Oh, and just so you know, the front suspension can be locked out. So I did have it locked out, so it's super stiff. So when I was doing my speed test, I wasn't going to be getting that cushion, which is more comfortable, but that can drop your speed a little bit. But now I'm gonna be reversing that to allow me to get the full cushiness of the suspension. But really what this bike is all about is this right here, going from the road to going off road. And we have a decent amount of bumps over here. And I'm just using throttle only right now. And this bike is just churning up here. Like again, that 95 Newton meters of torque is really, oh, whoa. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been back here. It's very steep downhill, but no problem for this bike. The hydraulic disc brakes did a really good job. Um, but yeah, the 95 Newton meters of torque, really, really good and useful in times like this. There's a little rabbit to get out the way, a little rabbit, so I don't run you over. But you know what? It would be nice if Ride One Up did include a you know, rear suspension option like they do with their Rev 1 bike. So even though it'll cost the, you know, the buyer a little bit more money, having that full suspension would just make this bike even better for going off road and stuff. So I'm gonna go down this hill one more time. It was so fun. Um, but yeah, having an option would be the way to go, I think, for the next version of this bike. And what's down here? Okay, got another little hill. And I think we have a little decent couple of bumps right here. Yeah, and let me get some more speed on this one. Woo. Oh yeah, feels good. Nice turning radius with this too. You can turn the handlebars a lot to get nice sharp turns if you really want. You know, I really love this building back here in St. Louis. I hope they never tear it, tear it down because it just looks so cool. I take a lot of pictures out here, but yeah, nice paint job. <laughs> now this bike also comes with front and rear plastic fenders and then also you will find a very comfortable seat. Ride One Up usually has some really good comfortable stock seats and that is the case here with this seat. No complaints at all. It's wide enough for a big butt person like me but still has some really good cushion with it and you can adjust the seat up and down to get that perfect fit for you. Now one thing that is missing on this bike is an easy place to be able to attach water bottles and stuff like that meaning that you don't have the kind of built-in bolts to be able to do that. Um, so again you can always attach something to this center bar right here or up on the handlebars or even on the rear rack or so but it would be nice to have that somewhere here in the middle and there are also two different designs of this bike so you have a step through version which is missing this bar right here so you can easily swing your leg in between to get on the bike and then you have the step over version which is the one I have here so when I do want to get on this bike I have to step over it like so and then now you can see I'm six feet tall and I do have my seat up a little bit because that provides me a little bit more range when I am pedaling um, but when I come to a like a stoplight or something or a stop sign I, I usually just step forward like this and it's not too bad but again I could lower the seat if I want to make it a little bit easier to get on and off and then this comes in three different colors so you have dark green you have white and also you do have the gray color that I have here so colors are pretty basic but you know for a bike like this that I'm going to be riding a lot on bike paths and stuff I like that the colors kind of blend in they don't really stand out too much but I could see some people wanting some more expressive or brighter colors for this bike now this bike also comes with a pretty big removable battery so you can use one of the two keys that comes with this bike to unlock it and then drop that battery down and pull it underneath to take it inside to charge it if you wanted to and the specs of this battery include 960 watt hours 48 volts 20 amp hours so this is a pretty uh, robust battery that is rated to get you between 45 and 60 miles as far as your range now after riding this bike for a few days without charging it I was able to get up to 48 49 miles for my total range which isn't bad for this bike weighing as much as it does coming in at 85 pounds myself weighing around 220 pounds on a good day uh, but also carrying a camera bag with a bunch of equipment in it and also riding it up to the 28 mile per hour class 3 limit that I did have it unlocked at so again your range will vary depending on how much you weigh how much you're carrying how many heels you're going up and what speed that you're riding at and your pedal assist level but for me I find the range to be very acceptable on this bike oh and I really like this grill pattern on the bottom of the battery I don't know how functional it is as far as like cooling or anything uh, but I will say that it does add some style to this bike instead of having just like a plain flat bottom to the battery like most bikes do all right so now for my hill test I'm just going to be using throttle only and I'm in pedal assist level five so maximum power and here we go in three two one boom all right so again no pedaling going up this hill pretty decent hill this is one of my favorite hills to test and we're at like 13 miles per hour very steady pace no problems at all Again, the peak output for this motor is 1500 watts. So when you need it, it can give you some power. So not bad at all. But again, typically for heels like that, I would use pedal assist. So to help the motor along, but still not bad. But now let's go down a little bit 
and we're gonna get a little speed here and I'm gonna stop halfway with the brakes. Not bad, I didn't slam on the brakes, you know, no need to do that, but just a very decent pressure on the brakes. And these things are really good. Hydraulic disc brakes are becoming very normal around this price range and brakes are good. All right, so now I'm about to go over some cobblestone here and you can already hear my voice <laughs> that this is a bumpy ride. Look, the front suspension is fine, but for something like this, um, having rear suspension would definitely be, you know, ideal. But again, if you are going to be doing any type of off-roading because these tires really do entice you to do that and, oh, here's a nice little hill. Um, you can always, again, add that suspension seat post. That would be a very easy upgrade that anyone can do to really, really give you that comfort to be uh, feeling really nice and good when you're going down hills and stuff like I'm doing now. And this is a pretty decent hill over to my left. Let me see if I can just easily get up. There was some dog poop there, but yeah, not bad at all. Look at that. Now, as far as the pedaling experience, this bike does have a cadence sensor, which is common around this price range. The more expensive bikes will have a torque sensor, which makes for a more natural pedaling experience. But I will say, well, let me say this before I uh, crash into these uh, metal poles here. <laughs> All right, so I made it through. Um, but I will say like pedaling right now, it feels good. And let me turn the power of the bike off right now and just see how this bike is to pedal with no power. So I am in like fourth gear right now. Not bad, a little bit of an incline right here. And let me go up a little bit and just really kind of give myself a little bit of a workout. So it's not bad, you know, it's not a super, super heavy e-bike like you'll find with some of the moped type of bikes out there. And now I have a little bit of an incline here. So I'm gonna shift down all the way to one. And now let's see how this is. So, all right, so I'm having to put a little bit of power to this. Still not bad though, but not ideal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this bike does, you know, again, it'll be fine if you do run out of battery, a little bit of ways from home. Hopefully you're not too far, but worst case scenario, not bad. And so look, Ride One Up has done it again. They released a very good bike that has some really good components. Nothing feels cheap on this bike, but it comes under that $2,000 price tag. So right at $1,895. And you're just getting a well-built bike from a very reputable uh, brand in Ride One Up. And also the performance is there. But I have to say the biggest competition for this bike is probably going to be coming from Ride One Up themselves. And this is their Rev 1 electric bike, which I reviewed not too long ago. So that bike actually starts at $1,895 like this one for their their hardtail version of that bike but that is more of a moped type of motorcycle style so you have a big headlight up front but you have really fast speeds you can get up to around like 35 miles per hour on that just using the throttle um, but it doesn't have a rear rack so you don't have the automatic built-in storage but that does have an optional center storage case that you can buy for some more money to put right in the middle of that particular bike uh, but again these are two different style of bikes where this rift does blend in more in the city environment as far as like riding on bike trails and through parks and stuff but also this is more suited for going off-road because you do have a wider turn radius uh, versus with the rev one so it's better for that um, so the rev one is going to be more for people who want to ride in the road alongside cars and stuff especially with that faster speed and just the look of that bike but no matter what you have options right i think that's the best thing to choose from but if you are looking for more of that traditional style bike that also is made to go off-road as well uh, this rift is a really good solid deal so i'll drop a link down below to this bike make sure you check that out to get even more information about it or to pick one up for yourself drop a comment down below and let me know what you think about this bike too but like always i really do want to thank you for watching this video and i'll catch you later peace